I just think it's a horrible situation. How could this have gone on so long? We all are just devastated over what's going on up here. Tucked away in the northeastern New Mexico town of Springer is a sad place where folks come to pay respects and for quiet reflection. But don't be deceived by this peaceful scene. You see, there's something terribly wrong here at the Springer Cemetery, and you won't find any clues among the irregular rows of tombstones. You see, the secret behind this graveyard rests with the souls who are buried here. It's a tale of negligence, governmental incompetence, and a shameful disregard for bereaved families. The greed of people, it upsets me. Mary Wiggins knows the problem firsthand. When Mary's dad passed away, he was to be interred in the Springer family plot. It did not happen. The cemetery person, I guess, that was going to dig the hole said there were people buried where we thought were our plots. The Springer Cemetery had buried somebody else in your family plot. Yes. We were devastated because we couldn't do what mother and daddy had asked us to do, which was bury them in the family plot. The family was forced to bury their dad elsewhere in the cemetery. And after Della Rich passed away, cemetery workers discovered the unmarked cremains of another person in Della's burial plot. What's going on here? Well, with some 1,700 souls buried here, this century-old graveyard is simply out of space. There is no more room. However, rather than turn away grieving families, City Hall simply resells burial plots. Penny Jump is a member of the Springer Cemetery Board. They go to dig a hole to bury somebody's loved one and they find that somebody already there. What do you say? I mean, it's, it's heart-wrenching. It's just heart-wrenching. Are you aware of cases where the town of Springer has sold burial plots that were already occupied? Yes. Joy Matlack is a researcher working with the cemetery board. That's one thing we're trying to figure out is how to find out who's actually buried in those graves. It's a daunting task. All Joy has to work with is a fragile 1931 map someone found in a closet and an outdated map from 1971. What's actually in the cemetery doesn't match any of the maps. You can see from year to year to year to decade to decade where a plot was sold and then it was resold and then it was resold. Consider the Roger Lopez gravesite. This is the Lopez burial plot. When A. Lopez passed away, they were going to bury him where? They were going to bury him right here next to his parents. But when they went to dig the grave, they found a coffin. So in fact, this burial plot was sold to two different families. Yes. Gail Farmer serves on the cemetery board. Reverend Loudon bought two or three lots here. And the piece of property was resold to the Padillas. So we had to reimburse the Loudons this piece of property so that their family could be together. So they double sold that lot? Yes. This burial plot right here was sold to two different families. Yes, sir. And when Mr. Carr passed away, they couldn't bury him here because Mr. Martinez was buried here. Yes, sir. The Coppock family was surprised to find strangers buried in the plots they bought 40 years ago. They had no knowledge of these being sold to anybody else, and it's plots that they have deeds for that they obviously can't use now. And then there's Pancho Mestis. Well, Mr. Mestis was supposed to be buried in Potter's Field. I have no idea why he wasn't buried in Potter's Field, but he was buried in the middle of Mrs. Walter's plots. When the Walters came up to pay their respects to Mr. Walters, they found Mr. Mestis in their plots. I don't know anyone who wouldn't be upset about it. Keith Walters first noticed a stranger had apparently been buried in the family plot some years after his dad died. It's a desecration to, to have someone take your grave that you paid for and put someone else in it. Mr. Mestis was laid to rest in the Walters burial plot. Yes, sir. Right in the middle. Right, yes, sir. Any idea how this happened? 
Not a clue. Even though the Mestis grave doesn't show up on any of the cemetery maps, Springer officials have shown little interest in resolving the issue. In fact, it was only after the Walters family hired an attorney that City Hall even investigated. Today, nobody is exactly sure just where Pancho Mestis is buried. Keith Walters isn't the only victim to complain. City Hall also ignored Mary Wiggins and her family. Did the town ever at least acknowledge the mistake and apologize? They acknowledged that they had sold it, but they, I, as far in a, as an apology, no. I think it's terrible to citizens that are in mourning that have to deal with that. To me, it's just very disrespectful. Anna Phillips serves on the Springer Town Council. When you're, you've lost your loved one, it's, it's a difficult situation to deal with anyway, but then when you go and don't have a place to put them, I just can't imagine. What needs to happen at the cemetery? They need to stop selling any plots whatsoever until land is purchased and they have a new cemetery. Springer Mayor Fernando Garcia did not return repeated phone calls for comment, so we caught up with his honor at the Tire and Lube Center where he works. This is a terrible situation, yes, would you yes, agree? It, yes, I do. I, I totally agree that that has happened. Although the mayor apologizes, he blames prior administrations for the cemetery woes. So you're talking 20 years right there of, you know, of an administration that didn't keep accurate records. It comes down to bad record keeping under uh, different people, under different, you know, clerks, whatever. It, it's just bad record keeping. Springer's town council is negotiating to purchase adjacent land for a new cemetery. And while the politicians point fingers to assess blame, it's these volunteers who must console the grieving victims at a country graveyard that is not as peaceful as it seems. When you think of what's going on here at the cemetery, what goes through your mind? I just want to cry. Somebody has to stand up for those people and the families that are in the ground. It's a very sad situation. They're our ancestors and they deserve the respect that we can give them. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13.